This is an example of an elite breeding variety. Elite varieties of crops are preferred by farmers because they have various attributes. For example, they are high yielding, thus they give better profits to the farmers. However, many elite varieties are susceptible to various diseases, which is a consequence of the process of selection. As a result, expected high yields may not be realized due to the diseases. This is not good news for the farmer, as it means he'll not be able to have an income. There are other varieties that may not have good yields, but they might be good sources of resistance. These are typically called unadapted varieties. Breeders usually cross the unadapted variety by the elite variety. Afterwards, this is followed up by extensive periods of field trials where the progeny of the crosses are subjected to excessive disease pressure and this takes a long period of time, up to 12 to 15 years. The process is labor intensive, it can be costly and the precision is not optimal. In light of this, marker assisted selection becomes an attractive alternative to conventional breeding. The elite and unadapted varieties may have a difference in one nucleotide in a genetic region that confers disease resistance. This difference in a single base pair, as shown here, is called a single nucleotide polymorphism or a SNP. It is an example of a genetic marker that can be used for selection. This is how it works. Once the two varieties have been crossed, their progeny may not be different phenotypically in the absence of disease pressure. However, genetically, one seedling may have the target SNP associated with resistance as shown here. This SNP can be exploited to select a disease-resistant plant at the seedling stage. Such a procedure is known as a genotyping experiment. In contrast to conventional breeding, it reduces cost while increasing the speed and also the, the precision of a breeding experiment. Now I am going to give you an overview of a typical genotyping experiment. The first thing I do is to harvest a leaf sample from the greenhouse. Then I'll do my DNA extraction. I just need a small piece, so I'll excise a small portion from the leaf tissue that I harvested from the greenhouse. Then I'll place this on a 96 well plate. I'll carry out my DNA extraction and here I'm just showing the last steps of the extraction process. And here you can see my DNA is ready. Since I want to genotype 384 samples, I'll use this robotic liquid handling system to accurately dispense my DNA into a 384 well plate. Also dispensed is a master mix which contains primers for the amplification of my region of interest. My DNA is now ready for genotyping and I am going to carry this out in a Roche light cycler. This is an example of the output you get when the experiment is over. The plot generated reveals three major clusters with the triangles representing the plant's genotype. The green cluster is homozygous for A allele, which is from the elite parent. The red cluster shows the plants that are heterozygous for alleles from both parents, and the blue cluster represents plants that are homozygous for alleles from the unadapted parent. We do not need the first and second clusters, therefore we select the blue cluster as plants that are pre potentially resistant, and this is one of the ways that marker-assisted selection can be used as an aid to develop better crops.